It's Halloween, and author Anne Rice is doing what she does best, writing about the dark side. Her new book, The Wolves of Midwinter, is taking her back to New Orleans. That's where she first conjured up some famous vampires. Michelle Miller sat down with Rice for an interview you'll see only on CBS This Morning. I Michelle, did. good morning. Good morning, I did, I did. Well, Anne Rice is something of an institution in New Orleans. Her fans there are deeply devoted. And now the daughter of New Orleans is planning to put down some new roots in the place that first inspired a legendary career. The queen of vampire cult fiction is back where it all started. I've been away too long, just too long. But while she was gone, the fans that helped make Anne Rice a household name have been keeping her supernatural world alive. I was looking at all of the different people in costume and I thought, they really know what matters. They know what matters to get out of yourself, to just um, yield to the imagination. It's Anne Rice's very active imagination that's built a literary empire. Everything from vampires and witches to her latest, man wolves. The Wolves of Midwinter is the second book in her new series about werewolves. This was a lot of fun to me to do this and to try to make it romantic and try to make it spooky at the same time. She credits the haunted history of New Orleans for her fascination with all things supernatural. But it's about more than just ghost stories. To me, vampires, witches, werewolves, they're great metaphors for us, for the outcast in each of us. Do you feel as though in some way you're an outsider? Oh, I always have felt like I was an outsider. I never felt that I belonged anywhere. Except maybe here in her hometown. I don't feel normal anyplace else. I don't feel normal anywhere, really. But I feel a little more normal here, you know, in my old city. A city that's welcoming her back with open arms. Miss Rice is in the house, everybody. Da, 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 da. Welcome. Anne Rice left New Orleans for California in 2005 after her husband died. But she grew up in this home on St. Charles Avenue and lived in the Big Easy for much of her adult life. How has this place inspired your work? Oh, it's inspired practically everything I've ever written. And she's written a lot. More than 30 books which have sold millions around the world. Interview with a Vampire started it all. One of your most famous works, Interview with a Vampire, was turned down not once, not twice. About five times. Five times. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did you handle that? To keep just moving? kept right on going. I knew it was gonna I was gonna be out there. You know, I just knew it. I knew the night I finished it. So I wasn't about to give up. And it became a bestseller later turned into a hit movie. <laughs> Nearly 80 years after Bram Stoker's Dracula, vampires were back in vogue. You made a business out of writing about the supernatural. First vampires, Seems like it. witches, mm -hmm. man wolves. Yes. When nobody else was doing it. Not too many people. Not too many people at all. Now everybody's doing it. Twilight. Mm -hmm. True Blood, The Vampire Diaries, The Undead Have Made a Comeback. Do you take credit for the resurgence? I'd leave it to other people to figure out why we all did this. Cultural historians will come along and they'll say, why suddenly in the last part of the 20th century everybody went vampire crazy, <laughs> you know. But at one point she herself gave up vampires, saying she wanted to focus on religion. I went back to the Catholic Church after 30 years of being an atheist, and I realized that I wanted to write just about Jesus Christ. Four years later, Rice turned away from organized religion again, citing its stance on homosexuality and women's reproductive rights, though she hasn't abandoned her faith in Christ. I always want to have the courage to reverse myself. You know, now, if somebody out there wants to call it flip-flopping, fine. You know, I looked up flip-flop, because someone did call me a flip-flopper, and it says to make a complete reversal. Well, that's what I did, so I have to say yes, I flip-flopped. The 72-year-old is anything but predictable. She's written several erotic novels and doesn't hold back in her latest offering. The sex scenes in the book are pretty racy. Are they? Good. I'm glad you think so. Okay. <laughs> I want them to be <laughs> Well, what makes Anne Rice blush? 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, in all my novels, I enjoy exploring the erotic side of things. I've written erotica, and I may write some more erotica. Oh, really? Is that, that, name? Yes. Is that a scoop? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and she may not be finished with The Walking Dead, either. Oh, zombies. I can't figure a way to do that one. Oh, you, ha you can't? No. How do you make a zombie romantic? I haven't figured that out. Or sexy. Exactly. Oh, well, that's a thought now. What if it's an absolutely beautiful guy? <laughs> okay, I'm beginning, I'm beginning to get it. And as you can see, it doesn't take much for Rice to let her imagination run wild. Rice says she's planning to get an apartment in the French Quarter soon and that the wolves in her next book in the new series may end up sharing her Louisiana roots. Incredible. Good story on this Halloween yeah, show. Thank Miller. you. You've given Anne Rice good ideas. Yeah, well, yeah. Right. Yes. Sexy vampire. <laughs> I have an imagination. <laughs>